Hey everybody, um, <coughs> welcome to my channel again, it is nearly November, so that means it is almost type 1 diabetes day. So every year on my channel I try to do something kind of neat to celebrate, and this year I'm deciding to show you guys my insulin bottle collection. So you see here the big mass of Hemolog bottle vials, the two Lantus vials to the left, and to the right of the Hemolog army, there is a Novolog bottle and a special bottle for the Glucodivon syringes. So in front of them you'll see a regular insulin syringe. It is 100 units by uh, BD. So. Let me tell you first about the difference between Novolog and Humalog. Well, not really the difference, they're just two different brands of slightly different kinds of fast-acting insulin, which is used to correct high blood sugars and bolus for meals. Fast-acting insulin is injected as needed, works in roughly 15 minutes, and will last about three to four hours in the bloodstream and it is actually given by most insulin pumps in short bursts instead of long-acting insulin to work as a basal. Now Lantus is long-acting insulin. It's injected once per day, usually at the start of the day. Uh, it takes out four hours just to start to get into your bloodstream. Uh, it acts as your basal insulin and most people don't actually need it while they're using an insulin pump, but uh, long-acting insulin is usually used when you are using syringes or an insulin pen, or I'm certain there's another form that I can't think of right now. This is the glucogen uh, vial. It's a little blurry on my camera, I'm sorry. Uh, and just really doesn't want to focus. It's pretty small compared to the uh, insulin vials. So here is the Lantus vial compared to the glucogen vial. Here is the Humalog vial next to the glucogen vial. And the Novolog vial. So another interesting thing that I am going to show you in this video is, as you can see in some of the Humalog vials, there is still a little bit of leftover insulin. This one isn't the best for showing you. Maybe this one has a little more in it? Yes, this one has notable insulin in it. So, with this syringe, if you really don't like needles, I would suggest you stop the video now. So, as you can see, it's, I don't know if you can actually see it, it's not, it's not as long as it looks. It's not even the size of a fingernail, really. So, and even if it was that big, you don't feel a thing. It's so thin. So, here we go. I'm gonna take the needle, and we are going to turn upside down a vial of Hemolog, as you would if you were to give an injection, and we're gonna slurp out the insulin. I've been meaning to do this for a while, uh, to like, consolidate all insulin in the vials. Just haven't really gotten to it. Whoa! -ho -ho. There is a lot of insulin in this one. So from just these two vials alone, Without air bubbles, we have over a hundred units of unused insulin. That is about half of a insulin pump reservoir, which actually, I will show you my pump now. So, um, insulin pumps have, can have skins on them, they have, they can do all kinds of fun things with them. As you can probably see, it's got a little clock in there, it's got a, it's got a thing to show you how much battery you have, how much insulin you have, and there's a circle up here that will tell you if you're on a s certain type of basal, or if you've changed your rates, which I'm on a different one right now from 
because we, I believe we set my main regular basil to my camp basil. Uh, we don't use it anymore as I am too old to attend the uh, summer camp that I usually attend. Oops, <laughs> face reveal right there. And this little antennae guy right here um, tells you if you are connected to a continuous glucose monitor, which I am. I can't really show that because of the way my camera is set up, so... Or else I'd have to, like, mash down and to knock over all the bottles, so... That's not fun. So, yeah, a lot of insulin can really go to waste if it won't fill your reservoir. Um, so see, these two bottles are now completely empty as I have drained them of any insulin, which is now all in that syringe. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching. Uh, I know it's a little bit long, but I really like to just every November. I just love to talk about type 1 diabetes. I know it's not a super matching theme for my channel, but hey, I'm a type 1 diabetic and I like to get the word out, you know? Feels good. Hello everybody, welcome to the second installment of Feather's Type 1 Diabetes Month videos. So, <clears throat> This time I will be showing you the four different pump sites that I have used over the years from Medtronic with their insulin pumps. Um, so first off, the bear I keep showing you is Ruby. She is a diabetes-specific teddy bear. Um, there's Ruby and Rufus. Uh, Ruby is the girl, Rufus is the boy. Um, and they are given to children when they are diagnosed with diabetes by certain diabetes centers. Um, so each Ruby or Rufus has different patches on them. There are hearts for where you check your blood sugar on your fingers. I have calluses on my two middle fingers where I usually prick. And they have little spots on their bodies where you can put a pump site. So first, I will show you where I've put mine on the many years. Uh, you can put them on the rear. It looks a little weird the way they did it on the bear. Uh, it's not actually here, it's more like up in this area, but it's down here because that was easier for the bear. So then, I believe there is a patch on the arms for injection sites or pump sites or whatever else have you. There are more on the front side. There are spots on the upper thighs and the stomach. Uh, I have usually over the years put mine on my backside, but just very recently, as of this year, I have been putting my pump sites on my stomach. So this is where Ruby will be receiving her um, pump sites as well. So the first pump sites that I have used were the Quick Set Paradigm. Uh, as you can see, this is a very, very old specimen. Uh, I believe it, yeah, it expired in 2013, which is very far into when I have been using the silhouettes. I believe I started those when I was 10. Uh, I began insulin pump therapy at the age of 7. So just give me a second here and I will stabilize this camera for you as I am recording this on my phone. I have a very nifty little stand that you can put your phone in. So my quick sets, um, quick sets have a, well all pump sites have these, but they have specific inserters that come with them. Uh, the Mio itself, actually, which I will show you in a minute after the first two, they come with their inserter. Some people use the inserter, some do not. So there's the package. So here is the pump site and tubing. All pump sites come with these. They also come with a nifty little plastic thing that goes on, and I will show you how it goes on in just a second. So. The uh, quick set inserter, I do not have 
well I do have it somewhere but I was not able to find it for this video and it potentially is so old that it's broken. So here we have our tubing. Come on. The tubing in most pump sites is roughly 23 inches long, so about two feet. Here is the bottom of the pump site. There is paper covering sticky plastic and plastic that is covering the needle. These pump sites can usually either be pushed in or injected with the inserter. So here's the needle. It's actually not very long. Here is my here is my pinky, not my pinky, my index finger for comparison. So you remove the plastic and remove the paper and most people, uh, well not a lot of people, but I personally use lidocaine cream for my pump sites so they do not hurt. And you, you, you pinch, it's hard to pinch the skin on a teddy bear, so just assume that I am pinching skin and you push in the pump site and it's on. So this tubing would connect to a reservoir inside of an insulin pump. Here is your needle. Oh no, it doesn't. Your needle, it bends like that, and there, your needle is covered. You can put it in the sharps now. And that's that for that bear. So, now that it is on our bear friend, so I can set the camera well. There we go. So now, here's how you remove the pump sight. You twist it to meet the arrow and pull it off to remove your pump. And that is where the neat little plastic thing I mentioned earlier comes in. So if you go swimming or if you take a bath, there is a piece of plastic shaped like the piece that goes on the port right here. <clears throat> and you put it on and click it so your infusion site is safe. No water can go in and nothing can come out. We, I'm bad and I usually recycle these because I don't use them. <clears throat> so then taking off the port site is easy as peeling it off. Some people may need anti-adhesive. The strange little tube right here is what goes under the skin. <clears throat> and that is what the insulin goes through. Next up on our list is the Silhouette Paradigm. This is a very, this is a more recent site as of my usage. As you can see, it expires in 2019, October 2019, have fun. Uh, I usually jokingly refer to the Nomad Silhouette as the pump site for users who love pain. As you can see in this one, the tubing comes separate from the tubing is not inherently attached to the site. And in just a second, I will show you why I call this one the pump site for users who love pain. <clears throat> Here is the needle with my finger for reference. Wait, if I can get it to see, be seen by the camera. There you go. It's not good. I mean, it is good, but... <clears throat> So this site is a little different in that you only peel off one piece of the tape before you insert. Uh, there is a silhouette inserter and silhouettes are also very weird because they go in at an angle, which is like 30 degrees or something like that. So you have your lidocaine cream on and you jab in your site, tape it down, peel off the tape, Oh, okay, never mind. You are supposed to peel off both pieces of tape. Mm. Yeah, you peel off both pieces of tape. Uh, you can see 
there is a weird shape and it's a little slanted because this is the side of a teddy bear and not a live human being. So it is a little interesting looking on the bear. There we go. And you remove the needle. You can see why I like to call this one the one for users who like pain. I will put my sharps over with the other sharps. I'm making a junk pile over here. So then, as the other sites would, you would remove it by peeling it off. So here is the tubing. This is the part that connects to your port site. This shape is pretty universal, actually, so you could probably use tubing from different sites, but don't take my word for that. Again, we see that it is paper, and again, we see this is the thing that connects to a reservoir, which I do not have an extra of right now to show you. Here is the interesting little plastic piece that goes on. Clicks in, easy as pie. Now when you remove the site, you just peel it off. Here's the cannula underneath your skin. Pretty cool, right? Now the third one on our list is interesting. It is called the Minimed Mio. And what's interesting about a Mio is that it does not come with a clicker, it is the clicker. It is packaged within its clicker, so you do not need to reuse one or replace it as you would any other pump site. I used these for a very short period of time as I did not find them very comfortable. Uh, they may or may not have freaked me out a lot, and I froze and panicked while using them. And yeah, they also bled a lot. Um, but that was just where I was putting them, and some people just don't react well to certain pump sites because they're just not what they need. So these ones actually are come in different colors. Uh, there is pink, gray, and blue. Uh, pink is the shortest at, I believe, it's like 10 inches, or like a lip, just 12 inches or something along those lines, and I believe gray is the longest at... 30 something. Uh, this also goes for the needles as well, as this is a three millimeter needle. Uh, blue is six millimeter and gray is nine. So here you see you have your needle, you have your paper, which comes off all in one little twisting action. Be careful not to pull up the pump site out of the uh, holster, which I jokingly call these. Uh, so you take your mini med Mio, you hold it by the striped ends, as you can see here. Pull it back until it clicks. Make sure your needle, your uh, noodle, <laughs> noodle, your tubing is out here. <clears throat> Put your thumbs in the little grooves on the side. Place it down where you want to go, and there's actually, I will show you. There's an arrow here that will point to where your tubing comes out, which is very, very helpful and has saved my butt on a couple of occasions. Uh, and you just squeeze. Press down in the middle to make sure your needle is out and pull off. And this does not need to be sharps. You can just cap it and throw it in the recycling. You should usually put these in the sharps, but they're recyclable. So my other problem with Mio's is that their tape is very small compared to other pump sites, and they fall off really easily, but you can easily counter that with a IV hand, which is what I use to hold on my lidocaine cream. They have these cutesy little, uh, Aesthetic holders. Here you go. You can see that. 
tubing. Now another thing that's weird about the Mio is that it does not come with a little clip to keep this part, to keep the inset protected. So I can't show you that. Peel this off. I will get my fingers under there. And there's the little tube where the insulin goes in. Now, I will show you my current pump site that I use. It's an interesting mechanism. Uh, there are actually two pieces that you stick onto your body. It is called the Surety Paradigm. Most people just leave off the paradigm part when they talk about it. Uh, these sites do not expire as they are very fresh. They don't expire till 2020. How lucky I am. So this one does not have an inserter. This one you must put in by hand. Uh, tubing is separate from the site. And this is also very different as the needle that goes in does not come out as it is also the tubing that your insulin goes through. So you remove the plastic covering, the rubbery covering. You remove your paper. Remove your paper. Pinch this rubbery stuff in the back. Do not get this part. Do not get this part stuck together or you cannot use a sight and push it in, just like a thumbtack. The interesting thing about the Surety is that, unlike other sites, it has two places where it connects to the body um, with adhesive. Um, I put an IV hand over this just to be super safe, um, but so if you were to say drop your pump, it wouldn't pull your whole site out, it would tug on this and this would be completely safe. Um, now the thing is you have to fill this tube with insulin as well before you put it in, insert it into the body. So here you see you, uh, peel it off, peel it off, and bingo. You put it somewhere nearby. As I said, the tubing is very universal. Uh, yeah. You plug in your tubing to the second sticky, and again, here's where your cannula would go in. Yep, ha cha cha. Um, removing the tubing. Here is, again, the little piece that goes and protects you. Ha cha cha, 2x combo. And so those are just kind of my opinions on four of the different sites that Medtronic offers for its different insulin pumps. Um, here, as you can see, the little plastic thing is not plastic on this pump site. It is metal. It is a little hard to see, uh, as it is very a little weird and not very reflective. And it likes to blend in with the little white bits. So, it technically counts as a sharp, so it must be put with sharps. My sharp pile. And the rest of this is recyclable. Thank you, Ruby, for being our demonstration little host. She would also like to Thank you for coming, and wow, it is very dark in this room for some reason. But I also would like to thank you for watching this video.